If you're a type of person who goes onto Google and search how to pass an exam just after failing one, well, you're not alone. Back then when I was still studying my undergraduate course, I kept on searching and trying different study styles, study advices, and tips from YouTube and friends. Waking up early, studying late, and she drinks, highlight, pencil, underline, blackout notes, drawing. Tell me any study technique that you've done and I most likely have tried that already. I was jumping from different study styles in every single exam and adapting to the ones that seemed to work. And then one day, I met Ali Abdal in YouTube. Uh, Gerard Korea says, first year med, Notion versus Google Sheets for a new topic. Honestly, use Anki. Don't use either of them. And once you've understood stuff, just make Anki flashcards, man. That's the way forward. It was through him that I started using Anki. Hi guys, I'm Gerard Korea, a second year medical student from Cebu Institute of Medicine. And today, we will be talking all about Anki. This will be a three-part series wherein I will talk about the pros and cons of Anki for the first video, which is this one, the basics of Anki for the second one, and for the last video, we will talk about the advanced features and how I use Anki for medicine specifically. Hopefully, at the end of this video, or at the end of this series, you would know what Anki is all about, and it will help you decide if Anki is for you. You can find the timestamps of the different topics on this video in the description below. It's divided into the principles, price, pros, and cons of Anki. I'll be talking about the pros and cons of Anki based on my one year of experience of using the app in med school, specifically in first year medicine. If you're the type of person who's interested with productivity, apps, and med school related topics, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. To start off, Anki is a flashcard app that incorporates active recall and spaced repetition. According to a book written by Peter Brown entitled Make It Stick, The Science of Effective Learning, it says there that active recall and spaced repetition is one of the most effective evidence-based study techniques. Active recall or retrieval practice is basically a study technique where you retrieve an information independently without looking at the source. The retrieval can be done through asking a question or just recalling the topic or information themselves. Spaced repetition is the process of spacing out moments of recall in order to solidify a certain concept. The active recall part of Anki allows you to create flashcards and lets you review them. Just like making flashcards, you write a question at the front and an answer at the back. That is the very basic concept of Anki. What makes Anki unique is it incorporates spaced repetition via the Leitner system. The Leitner system is basically like this. If you get a question wrong or right, it will then give a respective duration in which it asks you the question again. As for the price, Anki is completely free for desktop users and it's the one that I use. But unfortunately, Anki is paid in iOS for 24.99 US dollars or 1250 pesos. However, you can use Anki for free using your mobile device using AnkiWeb.net. It has a similar interface when using Anki for desktop. For Android devices, you can use AnkiDroid. It is free and also syncs with AnkiWeb. If you want to know more about med apps, click on the description below or at the link of the end of this video for the 10 apps that helped me pass first year med. Starting off with the pros of Anki is its accessibility and it's free for PC devices. Anki allows us to remember a lot of things for a longer time and is sort of a long-term strategy for learning. In my experience of using Anki, I created a lot of cards a few months before our final bi-monthly exam. And on the week of taking the exam, I was actually not cramming and felt relaxed since I started reviewing the majority of the facts and cards almost a month prior to the exam. The great things about Anki is that you can study anywhere using the mobile app. Through AnkiWeb.net, you can sync all of your Anki cards and all of your devices. One of the pros of Anki is that you can track your actual study time and progress with your studies through the statistics function in Anki. Here you can actually assess yourself and see at what moments you studied well and where did you have hard time studying. It also shows you the amount of cards that you have mastered and also the success rate of answering cards. One of the things that I liked about Anki, aside from the simple idea of creating cards, is that it allows you to customize how you study through the help of add-ons. Among the add-ons that I have is the review heat map where it colors a box on the respective date if I studied on that day, image occlusion for diagrams, and a lot more. 
I will talk more about add-ons on part 3 of this video, so don't forget to subscribe. Now, before getting into Anki, it's best that you know the disadvantages of Anki. Anki is not for cramming. It's really hard for you if you make the cards on the day before the exam, since making cards is not how you learn through Anki. You learn through Anki by answering the cards. But, I'm gonna admit though that I've actually used Anki several times on the day before the exam. Due to the idea of spacing out several cards and the algorithm within Anki, you're asked with certain facts that may be followed by another fact that is not necessarily connected to the first one. That is why Anki is preferably used for facts such as what is the duration or what is the meaning, not really preferred for concepts. However, I still use Anki for concepts but I make sure to create an overview of the whole idea or concept on my notes and then ask important facts in Anki. One of the greatest drawbacks of Anki is that it really requires dedication and commitment. You need to review constantly almost every day in order to fulfill the concept of spaced repetition. Lastly, the hardest thing to do with Anki is to transition from your old study style or technique into Anki. In my experience, it was a gradual process that took around a few months. I started by choosing certain topics such as histology and made them into cards, while I used my old study technique for the rest of the topics. As the months go by, I slowly transitioned into full Anki, wherein I only read a chapter once, and after it was made into cards, I never opened that chapter again. There might be more pros and cons of Anki that I missed, I might just mention them in part 2 and 3 of this series. If you have questions about Anki, feel free to comment them down below. I will continue talking about Anki for part 2 of this series, which talks about the basics of Anki. So don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next video.